Hello everyone, my name is Hasham. I'm the owner of Clemson Aeronautics where we make the riveting and dimpling systems. We are continuing with our, our uh, RV-14A build and our progress right now since uh, the last video is that we uh, primed all the ribs and uh, got them ready for riveting and of course as you can tell I had that marked pretty well so there is no confusion there now there is uh, a little bit of issues when we are machine counter sinking the spars now the first part that I am doing is the front spar and as you well know the middle nine holes in that spar is supposed to be machine counter sunk for a flush rivet. The rest from the top and the bottom, actually the machine counter sink flush rivet is the nine on top and nine on the bottom in the middle. So the rest have to accommodate the dimple of the horizontal stabilizer skin and the horizontal stabilizer skin is 25,000 thick. So the issue here is if I machine counter sink my spar so the entire dimple of the skin goes inside the machine counter sunk hole it will leave no meat left for the rivet to grab to. So what's happening is uh, that I tried uh, uh, and done a little bit of research um, in that subject. And I had made uh, like a sample, I took a 25,000 thick material and I dimpled it for a, a number three rivet and uh, I got a 62,000 piece of aluminum and I kept on counter sinking till this fits completely inside and the material is touching and it did leave very very little uh, meat for the rivet to grab a hold of which is very dangerous so I cruised the internet a little bit to see what other people are saying and uh, every there is one gentleman that really done me a big favor by doing that research before me and sure enough, when I got back to the manual, it's saying machine countersink for a flush fit of the dash three rivet, then go a little deeper, seven thousandths. Of course, our tool here have notches on it. Each notch is one thousand. So I try to organize myself so I can move a little faster. I know the nine holes in the middle here have to be flush rivet, so I done that first. And I set up my tool to do that perfectly. Then I went 7,000 deeper uh, by going seven clicks. It's, it's that simple. And uh, now I'm machine counter sinking the whole thing. Now, what's left after the front spar? Uh, we have um, those two pieces, <laughs> forgive me, I already forgot what the, the official name for it, and I believe it's a lingeron uh, that goes in the middle between the ribs. And uh, those two lingerons, they have some dash three rivets on both sides. And it has, and that is what's touching the skin. And I have to do machine counter sinking. Also the same style, flush plus seven thousandths, and also the rear spark. So I just went ahead and finished all the flush ones. Then I went seven thousandths deep, and I'm gonna do everything else. Then when I'm done, I'm gonna scuff those parts, and I'm gonna frame them.
Okay, folks, I'm going to have to take you with me to show you what I'm talking about now. Um, the plans actually talk about this particular uh, machine counter sink. And this is what it said it would look like. The rivet have to sink in about that much so it is not flush so it have to be a little deeper than flush so when I went seven thousands deeper this is what it looks like I'll try and take a, a good picture of that and post it on, the, uh, on uh, this tape so I'm sure you don't want to see me counters, machine counters taking the rest of this but I'm going to go ahead and mention a couple of more notes. As you can see, I have a block of wood. And actually, if you look closely on that block of wood, it have an angle to it. And this is because the flanges are opened a little bit. This flange is, is going this way, and this flange is going this way. So, I want that to be flat with my um, drill press. So, I made a wooden block where it leans it this way a little bit, but not too much. So, this is up just a little bit when it comes under my tool. And by the time I press my tool on it, it leans over just a little bit and it becomes flat. So you're gonna have to deal with that unless you're gonna do it with a with a with a drill by hand, which I don't like uh, because it will veer to the left and right and it it won't be as perfect. This is the machinist in me. Like the pilot in me tells me I have to build a safe airplane. The machinist in me is kind of like we, we talk thousands of an inch uh, all the time in machining. So when I'm doing something like that, uh, I, sometimes I drive people crazy trying to get really uh, close to what I want, which is to a lot of people is nitpicking. So. Uh, anyhow, you have to deal with that uh, with your airplane. So uh, I suggest you you have uh, like um, do it on the drill press, so you can have uniformity. And the good thing about the skin on the horizontal stabilizer, it's a little thicker. It's twenty-five thousand thick, kind of have a little bit of rigidity to it. So if you do good with that, you can you really make that horizontal stabilizer look good. Now, I uh, finished uh, machine countersinking the front spar and the rear spar, and uh, I done the the front spar as I mentioned before using this block right here on my drill press, except this was leaning this way. Um, the, for the rear spar, the rear spar have a curvature that's kind of the opposite of the front spar. It kind of the flanges would lean in a little bit, just because of the curvature of the horizontal stabilizer the way it is. So all I done is took my block, unscrewed the bottom, and flipped it the other way around so I would get. A positive angle more than 90 degrees so I can use it to do my rear spar now I uh, finished uh, machine countersinking the front spar and the rear spar and uh, I done the, the front spar as I mentioned before using this block right here on my drill press except this was leaning this way um, the, for the rear spar, the rear spar have a curvature that's kind of the opposite of the front spar. It kind of the flanges would lean in a little bit, just because of the curvature 
of the horizontal stabilizer the way it is. So all I done is took my block, unscrewed the bottom, and flipped it the other way around so I would get a positive angle more than 90 degrees so I can use it to do my rear spar. Now while I have the uh, tool set up to do that size dimple or machine countersink that would accept the skin on the horizontal stabilizer, I went ahead and made a block to do the stringers also because the stringers also have machine countersink holes uh, that's going to accommodate the skin. So I just took a 2x4 and on my bandsaw I cut the corner off of it the way it is and cut a notch in it so I can do the machine countersink and the way I do it is I would put it like so so I have a place for the tool to go to. Now if you look on that that cut out is made because of the radius in the stringer and all I have to do hold it like so And a machine cutter sting sunk my stringer. So all the uh, number 40 holes is going to be machine cutter sink sunk on the uh, stringers. Now that we're done with all the machine countersinking for the uh, lingerons and the spars, it's time to scuff them and prime them. Well folks, this is uh, it for this video. I'm going to go ahead and finish machine countersinking all the parts that needs it, the front spar, rear spar and the lingerons that I have here and um, I will call it a day. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.